All right, Mike, great reporting. Thank you. Meanwhile, amid reports that the Obama White House delayed the mission to rescue U.S. hostages in Syria, including the late James Foley, former senior intelligence officer, Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer is now directly blaming the president for the failed mission. Take a listen. Instead of doing what's best based on the intelligence, Steve, everything is run through this, this multi, multiple pronged political opt, optic at the White House. And in this case, I, I think clearly there was a lot of downsides to going with the mission, but they went with the mission. And then when the mission didn't go as planned, as you right. point out, the hostages weren't captured, they threw Special Operations Command under the bus saying, well, it's really kind of their fault. It was the president's fault for not approving it when he should have. All right, here with reaction to this and much more, Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. Ralph, there's two things that came out of our reporting tonight. Number one, the lack of urgency, and a day later and a dollar short. In other words, you know, this is only me, but if I saw the beheading of James Foley, I would go to the Situation Room if I were president. And number two, the president drew the red line in the sand in Syria. He saw each city one by one fall, and they did nothing. They just stood by and just let it happen. Well, President Obama is a creature of words, of rhetoric, and he has this almost childlike belief that if he tells big fibs or says he's going to do something or did it or outright lies about it, that somehow that makes it okay, that makes the problem go away. I mean, he's really an interesting case study psychologically, but this hamlet of a president forever debating to be or not to be, procrastinating endlessly, is really doing incredible damage. When he became president, Sean, radical Islam was on the ropes. Not totally vanquished, but it was, it was badly wounded. It, it was hurting. And if you look at in the past six years, the stunning recovery, the metastasis of it, um, it's, it's now vastly more powerful. Not just Islamic State, but this web, this loose network of Islamist fanaticism uh, that spans much of the globe, uh, it is stunning. It is vastly richer, more powerful, has more backers than Al-Qaeda ever did. And as I try to tell people, look, I was in the Pentagon in the late 90s, then as a retiree just afterwards, I watched, I watched as the Clinton administration kept denying that Al-Qaeda was, was a serious threat. And but, uh, this but, is so much worse. Colonel, he was the guy that was uniquely qualified to bridge the gap with the Muslim world because of his background. Remember, Nicholas Kristof wrote in the New York Times back in the day, having interviewed Obama, there's nothing more beautiful than prayer at sunset when he was going to that school in Jakarta. Um, the, the tide of war is receding, overseas uh, uh, contingency operations, man-caused disasters, workplace violence with Major Hassan. The, their, ISIS is the JV. Back, that was just January. There seems to be, I'll use a phrase that Jennifer Aniston once used about Brad Pitt, there seems to be a missing chip. They don't seem to understand radical Islam, even at this late hour, and I'm having a hard time understanding why. What, what more evidence do you need? That, that's why I wanted to know if, in fact, he witnessed the, the James Foley beheading. He ought to see this. And he, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think he understands it. There's something missing, and I don't know what it is. What's missing is curiosity. Obama has a, a closed worldview shaped by his mother, by Bill Ayers and company, by the Reverend Wright. He doesn't want to know because it doesn't fit his worldview, his preconceptions. And, you know, it's funny. It's sad because his background as a couple years in Indonesia as a child actually misinformed him about uh, Islam. Now, I did a research project some years ago in Indonesia. It's totally different, except for Banda Aceh in the far west. In, uh, Islam is at its most benign and syncretic. It's a, it's a, a mush of religions in, in, uh, in Indonesia. It did not prepare him for the savagery, the brutality, the civilization civilizational catastrophe of Middle Eastern Islam, of the Saudis, of the Gulf Arabs, of Islamic State, the, the, the savagery toward women, the, the hatred, the primal fears. I mean, without getting too woolly on it, I will just say that we have seen Islamic civilization, which was teetering on a cliff, go over the cliff in the Middle East, you know, and Obama is chasing unicorns. How shocking that the UAE, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, decide to act militarily in Tripoli without us and not even informing us how far we have fallen in that sense. 
and, and to go back to this point, I was beaten up pretty hard for my criticism about his background and associations back in 2007 and 8. But it really comes down to that, doesn't it? What he was, what he was indoctrinated into, but he has shown no capacity to grow and change that I've seen. Have you seen it? No, and, and that's the amazing thing. In, in office, almost six years, he's, he's shrunk it. He's the amazing shrinking president, wow. a tiny man in a well-tailored suit. But, you know, that incident with the United Arab Emirates sending their planes through Egypt to hit targets in Libya, well, they didn't tell us because they can't trust us. Because we can say the Obama administration routinely backs the bad guys. They trust the Qataris, who are principal funders of the Islamic State and other radical organizations. I mean, this is the world turned upside down. Obama doesn't understand radical mm -hmm. Islam, doesn't understand the Middle East. And oh, by the way, he doesn't understand the American people. And worst of all, he doesn't care. Wow. For A chilling indictment. Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, thank you.